This time of year, we need all the help we can get with our immune system, but sometimes getting little kids to take herbal preparations like tinctures can be really challenging. So today we're gonna to be making an herbal remedy that your kids are going to beg you to take. They're so delicious and it's so good for your immune system. But first, we've gotta go foraging. Here we are standing at a wild elderberry plant. There's actually quite a few of them around here. This is a Sambucus nigra, and it's what you're looking for when you're out harvesting elderberries for medicine. They actually grow all over the United States. You don't have to worry too much about the species as long as you have one that has blue or black berries when they're ripe they're good to go and they're great for medicine. You can grow these in your own yard. That would be really easy to find them. But like I said, in a lot of places in the United States, you can just come on out and harvest them. Now, when we're using elderberry, the parts of the plant that we wanna use for children are the berries. They make great elderberry gummies and they taste really good. For babies or for the elderly, you can also use the flowers of the plant. And for healthy adults, you can actually use the leaves. These leaves don't look super healthy on this plant, so we're not gonna do that. But today, we're using the berries themselves. We need about a cup for the remedy that we're making, so I think I have that here. While there's always room for more studies to be done, there's actually been a lot of studies on the active compounds in the Sambucus nigra plant. In vitro studies have shown that the elderberry plant is really good as a cytokine regulator. That means that it helps to regulate the messaging system of your immune system. Amazingly enough, it both inhibits and encourages interleukin-10, which is part of your internal messaging system that helps your immune system to work really well. This really upholds the long-standing history of elderberry being used medicinally as an immune modulator. That means it helps to regulate your immune system not letting it go way too crazy over the top and not letting it get too low. It just keeps it active and ready and in really good standing. Human studies have also shown that elderberry has this amazing ability, if taken at the very beginning of an influenza, to drastically reduce the length and the severity of a virus, specifically the influenza virus, but it does work on other things. Elderberry is known as being a really safe herb, but make sure you always do your own research, make sure it's right for you. If you're taking any medications or have any other health problems, it's really good to double check that an herb is right to take. And of course, there's always a few people who might experience some allergies to any given herb. So make sure it's right for you and for your family before you actually take it. We have a bunch of elderberries here. We're ready to get back into the kitchen and actually make our elderberry gummies. Making the elderberry gummies is actually really easy, but the first step is that you need to make a really, really concentrated tea. We can do this from either the fresh elderberries like we just harvested, or we can do it from dried elderberries. Today, I'm actually gonna be using Farmhouse Tea's Herbal Elderberry Syrup Mix because not only does it have the elderberries in it, but it also has some other really great herbs in there that are just gonna really help to boost the immune system. It's got astragalus, ignatia, it has some ginger, cloves, cinnamon, all of those are really good for that cold and flu season, and they're gonna taste great in our gummies. So I'm gonna be using this. If you wanted to use your fresh elderberries, you would just pick off about a cup of the berries from their little stems. It just takes a minute. You can do it pretty quickly. But since I'm using the dried herbs, I'm actually just gonna use a half cup of dried herbs. Now you could use just pure dried elderberry. You can see that has all sorts of really great looking stuff in there. Either way, you're gonna start with one cup of water in your pot and add your either half cup of dried herbs or one cup of your fresh herbs. Turn the heat on and bring that to a simmer. As soon as it gets to a simmer, we're gonna to wanna to put the lid on and let it simmer on low for about 10 minutes before we turn the heat off on our pot and let it sit there with the lid on for about another 20 minutes. 
After that happens, you'll be ready to strain it off into a jar because something that's really important about this recipe is that your concentrated tea absolutely has to be all the way cooled down. So you're gonna to wanna to get it in a jar and get it into a refrigerator to sit at least overnight. Lucky for me, I have a chilled elderberry concentrated tea already in the refrigerator that I made yesterday just to be ready for today. So let's look at the other ingredients and the supplies you're gonna need for this recipe. First of all, you're going to need six teaspoons of a really good quality gelatin. Then you'll need three quarters cups of a really good quality honey, three quarters cups of a just plain white granulated sugar. Don't get anything fancy. The evaporated cane juice crystals don't seem to work quite as well. So go with the plain white refined sugar. You'll need two teaspoons of a citric acid. Make sure that you get citric acid that's not from a genetically modified corn source. Yes, that's where a lot of it comes from, believe it or not. We'll need our half cup of our chilled elderberry tea plus a tablespoon of the chilled elderberry tea off to the side. If you don't have this additional tablespoon, if you concentrated yours down to just half a cup, then you could use just water, you could use um, a different tea, a different herbal tea. You could even add a little bit of lemon juice if you wanted a little brightness of flavor, but you need a tablespoon of liquid for that. The supplies that you need are actually pretty simple. First of all, you need your mold. Make sure you get the size and the shape you want. You don't have to use gummy bears. You could use just plain old circles. You could use all sorts of things. There's lots of shapes out there. So you have a lot of options. One of the most important things to have for this recipe is a good thermometer. It does not have to be digital. It can be an analog thermometer, but it has to be a candy thermometer or be able to accurately get up into the, well into the 200 degrees, 250 degree Fahrenheit on your thermometer to measure the food. Okay, you guys, you're gonna be surprised how simple this really is, really straightforward. Step number one is to prepare our molds. Now this is really important. You want to make sure that your gummies don't stick in your molds. The easiest way that I've found this is just to get some good old aerosol style cooking spray. Now you guys know me, you've been following me for a while. You know I don't cook with this stuff, it's not my favorite, but it really is the easiest to use when it comes to preparing your molds. Thoroughly just spray right into every cavity. But right now, while I'm sure that every little bit at this point has gotten a full spray, I don't really want that much oil pooled in there. So now I'm gonna turn this upside down and I'm gonna let it sit upside down to kind of drain out while I continue with the rest of the recipe. Now we're gonna start by putting our honey, our sugar, and our one tablespoon of extra liquid all into a pot and stirring it up really well. Turn that pot onto medium high. Now we wanna bring this mixture all the way up to 260 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure you have your thermometer ready and on so that you can keep that measurement because this actually happens pretty quickly. Now, as you get close to that stage, it is going to boil up a little bit, so be ready to turn the heat way down so that you don't boil over. The mixture has now come to about 255 degrees, 257. It's a little hard to be perfectly exact. So I kind of aim for right in the middle. If you have made candy before, you'll know that this is the soft ball stage that we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off and let this start to cool down. Now we're gonna wanna let it cool to 190 degrees Fahrenheit before we take the next step. While we're waiting for this to cool down to that 190 degrees, we're ready to take our next step. And that is to mix our gelatin into our cold and concentrated tea. We need to do this a few minutes before we're ready to use it because it needs to do something that's called blooming. And that's where it's gonna allow it to thicken down and to really develop. Make sure there's no lumps in it. And we're gonna let that sit. 
One of the great things about this recipe is that you can use it with all sorts of different herbs. It doesn't just have to be elderberries or elder mix. If you wanted, let's say, to make a sleep gummy, you could make it with valerian root. You could make a tea out of valerian root. Of course, that would kind of taste like stinky feet. Now, you could make it out of valerian root and add lavender and hops, and that would be really effective when it came to medicine, but you would kind of have like soapy, beer-flavored, stinky feet-flavored gummies. Not quite what we're looking for. <laughs> okay, rewind that. One of the great things about this recipe is you can use it with all sorts of really good herbal remedies. You can make all different flavors with it. Just make sure they're flavors that you actually want to eat and they taste good. So if you wanna make a sleep gummy that helps you sleep well, make it with lemon balm tea and you make it the exact same way that we've done here. While we're waiting for our gelatin to bloom and our uh, candy mixture to cool down, we're gonna go ahead and finish prepping our little molds. I'm gonna go ahead and just try to get the rest of that oil out of there. I'm just gonna womp them down on the towel a few times. Get out anything that wants to puddle. And then lay these flat on a cookie sheet. These are gonna need to go into your refrigerator. So it'd be good to have a spot ready in your refrigerator. Now our mixture is cooled all the way down. It's time to go ahead and stir in both our gelatin mixture and our citric acid. I like getting that citric acid in there first because it's still in powder form and really just giving it a good stir. Citric acid is in here. One, it gives it a nice bright flavor. A lot of berry things need that kind of sour tang to it to make it taste really good when you add this much sweetener. But it also is going to help bring down the pH of our gummies so that they become more shelf stable. They're gonna last much longer with the citric acid in there. And stir in this gelatin. You can see it's all the way hardened up there. That is great. And stir it in. You'll have to break it apart a little bit. Stir it until you have no more lumps and it's all completely well incorporated. All right, this is completely incorporated and it is ready to go as this beautiful deep red color and it smells really good. Not as good as it's gonna smell once it's all the way done. The gelatin definitely brings in a little bit of a savory smell to it. So don't be thrown off by that because these are gonna taste great. Okay, now we're ready to fill our mold. The molds generally come with a dropper that looks like this, and this is really helpful to fill these things up. I have tried just pouring them on and scraping it off the top, but it does make a mess of the gummies. They kind of stick together and they don't do a great job. Now, what you do wanna do is try to not get any bubbles into your gummies while you're filling them because those will stay there. If you see them, you may wanna pop them right off and just fill up each of the gummies. This is the longest part of this entire process and you have to work kind of quickly before it starts to set up. So if you can, grab a buddy and let them help you. <laughs> Thanks. These are ready to slide into your refrigerator overnight to let set up. Here are some gummies that I made yesterday and they've been in the refrigerator overnight. So let's take a look and see how they are. Wow, do you see that just pop right out like that? I'm gonna pop these out and I'm going to put them back onto a cookie sheet lined with this parchment paper because you wanna take one more step here if you want these to be shelf stable. These are ready, you can eat them at this point, your kids will love them, they're totally medicinal, they are ready to go. The problem with them right now is they are still a little juicy, so they're not shelf stable, they're not ready to sit on the shelf. So we need to dry these a little bit. You can't dry them in a dehydrator or in an oven or anything else that has heat. So what you need to do is dry them in the air in the refrigerator. As far as making these shelf stable, your main microbiological threats to this food are actually mold. 
So we're gonna do a few things to reduce that. One is we're gonna reduce the amount of moisture by letting them air dry in the refrigerator like we just talked about. But the second thing that we wanna do is to keep the pH nice and low. We've already added some citric acid. So, you know, that's gonna help a little bit. But if you really want these to last for a long time, and I mean like a year type of long time, um, especially in your refrigerator, then you're gonna wanna take one additional step. And that is that you're gonna wanna mix your gummies into a mixture of sugar and citric acid. This is one part citric acid to six parts of just refined sugar. You're just gonna give them a little dusting, kinda makes them look just like the little sour gummies that you get at the grocery store. This is just gonna add a little bit more acid right to the surface of them where they would have a tendency to get some mold on them. So this is really going to help them. We're gonna do this for all of them. We're gonna pop them back in the refrigerator, out in the air, just like this, not covered, and I'm gonna leave them sit there for, gosh, up to three weeks, at which point they're gonna get nice and dry and be totally dried out, ready to just stick in a jar and either keep in the refrigerator to keep for a longer period of time, or you can um, keep them out on the counter for a short period of time. Just keep an eye out for any formation of mold. That will be your sign that they're no longer good and you should just whip up a new batch. Now let's talk about dosing these. Elderberries are a very, very safe food. In fact, you can make elderberry syrup and pour it over your pancakes at breakfast. So your kids aren't gonna accidentally overdose on this. If they got into this and ate the whole package when you weren't looking, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. But for immune health, what you really do wanna do is give your kids at least two of these gummies every single day. If they're actually fighting some specific threat, like, you know, maybe somebody in the family has an illness or they've been exposed to it at school, you'll wanna increase that to two bears three times a day. And if somebody's actually sick and you're directly fighting a virus, I would do two bears every couple of hours. That will really give your body a fighting chance to get over it. You guys, this is such an amazing way to make some great herbal medicine that your kids are absolutely gonna love. Enjoy, I know your kids will. Hey guys, come on and try these out. Come take your medicine, you can each have two. Hey, if you want to know about more herbal remedies that you can make in your own home, check out this video right here. Ooh, what do you think? Are they good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. yeah.